Hello, welcome to Dave's shed. This is where I live most of my time. Um, I'm gonna put a load cell modification on my Thrustmaster T3 PAs. Um, I, there, there's many kits you can buy that are just simply plug and play. Um, you don't have to take the wheelbase apart or any the the pedal base apart or anything like that. Uh, you just literally attach it, plug one in, plug the other in, and, and it's done. But they're about hundred quid. I haven't got about hundred quid to spend um, at the moment, so I've done my best to research all the parts and everything that I need, and, and I've got them all. They're all here. We have the load cell sensor itself. We have. Um, in here a Leo Bodnar load cell amplifier um, this was 15 pounds um, this was 7 pounds um, I also have a rubber door stop maybe two pound I can't remember and some nuts and bolts and stuff um, you, you've got to take the pedal base apart to do this mod but nothing will be damaged inside so if you don't like it if you want to sell your pedals if you want to change your pedals or anything you can just simply plug everything back in as normal and uh, it'll be completely back to, to standard um, so I'm going to get stuck into this. Um, I'm going to try and do it all sort of like real time so you know how simple it is. I, I, if I do get distracted and I have to cut away, um, I won't be doing any, anything more on the pedals. Um, so I'll just restart the video and you'll know it, it's, it's hopefully going to be super quick and easy. Um, I've not done this before. Um, I've, I've searched other videos and, uh, and it, it seems really simple. So let's get stuck in. Right, you'll have to excuse the mess. Um, got loads on the go at the moment, loads of little projects and stuff. Um, but obviously, first thing we have to do here is uh, remove the back off the pedals. So, uh, I shall undo all these screws. I presume this mod will also work on the T3 PA Pros um, but with me not having the Pros I don't know um, you just have to work it out for yourself when you, you see how it all works Like I say, I, I've not done this before. This is I'm doing this real time with you, so who knows what I'm doing? This video might not even end up going out. It might be, <laughs> it might be a complete nightmare to do. Okay. 
Here I, I can't actually go any further. Um, there we go. wrong pull and uh, you snap something. Okay. Anticipate this awkwardness. The video I watched, it just undid them screws and everything just came apart. I think he's having us over. Maybe he works with Thrustmaster and he wants you to break stuff so then you have to spend more money with him. I don't even know what that is I'm undoing there. Well, I think I think we needed to. Isn't it crafty? No screw in there, he didn't tell us about that one. Bear that in mind, underneath the cable there's a little screw in there that's going to ruin your day. Okay, we should be able to get somewhere now. Bingo. Now under here there's a um, plug attached to this that you can just unplug. You don't have to damage any wires or anything. There we go. That's it, it's just that plug goes into that socket there and it can only go in one way so when you're putting it back you don't have to worry so we can put that to one side for now and uh, in case you hadn't noticed we have dogs <laughs> it's also a good excuse to give everything a good clean out Right, now the uh, the one we need is this one, it's even labelled break. All you do is simply unplug that and that's it. And now all that is the, the potentiometer, potentiometer, potenti whatever that is, the potentiometer I think is the right way to say it. Um, that, that goes to that lead and that's simply uh, like a dial that turns, that tells um, the sim that you're on how much braking force you want. That's just a lever, basically. But what we're going to do is attach this so that it, that won't move. So that instead of the lever, that will sense pressure and give you a more realistic brake feel. 
that's the plan. I've actually got a league race tomorrow, um, so this shouldn't take long to do, but then I, I've got to get used to um, the difference in braking. I haven't got much time to practice and stuff, so this might all just be a flop and I might plough into everybody at turn one. Right, the next thing we need to do this is the load cell amplifier that changes the signal that comes from the load cell into something that these pedals can recognize um, uh, so yeah pretty simple really you've got four wires that go into there and then you make up a, a small plug which I'll show you in a minute and that goes from there into there and that's it that's all you need to do um, so yeah I'm just I'm just gonna crack on with it I've just realized though the little wiring diagram I need for this bit is on my phone that, that's there that's recording this so I'm just gonna stop the recording and and just get the wires the wire order and then carry on recording okay I'm back um, all I've done is these wires that are attached to here literally just slotted them in there you, you've got your red is your power your black is your ground and then you've got green in white out that's uh, pretty simple to follow but I couldn't remember it so now the the other side of it um, this is where you've got to make a plug up so we have one of these I think this plug is called a JSTPH um, I'll I'll double check on that and, and I'll put that here uh, exactly what it is hopefully I'm right JSTPH if, if not I'll like I say it'll be there um, and that, that's that's all you need uh, oh and um, one of these for the other end um, I can't remember what they're called I'll, I'll, I'll put everything there I'm gonna leave links in the description of uh, where to buy everything everything that you'll need um, to do this and then you, you can't go wrong then hopefully um, right I'm gonna do this uh, I'll, I'll solder these together so that basically um, that will go onto there solder onto there and that plugs into there and that that's literally it that's all you have to do so I'll make this lead up now if you haven't got a soldering iron or you're no good with soldering um, you, you can do this with little crimp connectors if you need to um, just do things however you feel comfortable and just make sure it's safe as well don't be um, don't be doing no twist and tape and praying it's all right just make sure you've got a good connection just get some heat shrink pieces of heat shrink Just trim some uh, outer off the wires. Get silicon wire if you can, it makes it really easy to work with. What's 
side done and then we've got this it's that plug we need so make sure you've got plenty of length there and you've plenty of mounting options I'm going to go for a bit of hot glue I'm going to mount this circuit board inside there with a bit of hot glue uh, because hot glue um, when if you need to remove it you can just peel it off so um, keeps everything nice and neat right we don't need that bit and you see that's not silicon wire preaching to you and I'm not doing the same myself This is where you need to be a bit careful. This uh, this one here. Now my 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 colours on these wires don't match up to what things should be on here. So this is where you got to be a bit careful. Uh, Dave from the future here. Um, ignore all that little bit there about me not knowing what wires go <laughs> where. Um, I've labelled on this picture now um, where where your wires go, your 5 volt, your signal wire and your ground wire. Uh, sorry for the confusion. So we have the 5 volt going to the red. Solder around here some more. Okay. And then the middle wire is the signal which goes to the middle wire on that one ground to the black wire little tip for you when, when you're doing when you're connecting wires like this um, I'll, I'll do that one again so I can show you don't twist that one and don't twist that one leave them leave them frayed if you twist them separately and when you put them together they sort of twist around each other um, if you leave them both frayed and then twist them they sort of twist into each other and uh, give you a much stronger connection there you go And if, if, if that's right, that's all the soldering I've got to do. It really is that simple. Even simpler if your wires are the right colour. Snip them off, make sure you don't drop anything inside the pedals. And then your heat shrink. Slides over. Uh, I should 
have a little well cut there it is. and secure yeah like I say that that's the electrical side of it done all we have to do now I say all we have to do I've not even looked into how to do this but all we need to do now is get the load cell onto the metal bracket that the conical mod sits on so let's uh, see how we do that I think he did say you have to remove the pedal, or, or not remove the pedal completely, just um, drop the pedal down so that um, you can slide the load cell in. What I'll do is I'll take the conical mod off first. Said and done. There we go. things a bit easier that that came all the way out that's what that screw in the middle there that I wasn't sure whether I was to undo or not that was holding that in so at least we know what that was for now <laughs> right now let's remove that Apparently we've got to drill a couple of holes. So if that's on there like that. Okay. Just turn these over and uh, get things lined up properly. Unplug that for now. Definitely be giving, be giving these a clean out and a bit. There's a lot of dog air in there. Right. Now this this is what was recommended to use, um, but to me it seems a bit small and flimsy. But we'll see. I might be wrong. This is why I bought a great big doorstop. I mean, I'm not breaking that. I'm a so we'll see, we'll, we'll try it with this first. Can line stuff up. See that will give me far too much travel before I get to the load cell there. Uh, I don't really want that. So. I can always uh, add a couple of washers if need be. Okay. 
Uh, I'm just lining it up so that the the cutouts on the load sensor are where the conical mod would normally go through and then I need to mark and drill two holes in there so I can put nuts and bolts through there to uh, hold that in place so I should make a little bit of room over here Okay, what we need to do now is find a couple of bolts that fit those threads. Um, which I think, are, yep, a little bit bigger than that. There we go. literally just a couple of bolts through there into the load cell holes oh aren't big enough hang on Okay, holes should be big enough now. So we take one of those. I'm going to put another washer on as well to give it a bit of clearance, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, yeah the uh, clearance I was talking about, um, underneath there is um, it's like a resistor um, and that the, the, the measurements come from the amount of resistance in there so when that gets any kind of pressure on it it measures a tiny amount of resistance there which goes to the amplifier goes to your pedals which turns you into Nigel Mansell I hope yeah that's that's looking good right now 
The bit that I don't quite understand is how to get that through there. But oh, let's have a look. As far as I know, I'm just going to drop this down a bit. If your pedals are still in warranty um, and you're worried, then then maybe just wait or buy the more expensive one. Um, not that I'm going to cause any damage to anything here, but if you do have a problem and you have to send them back to the Thrustmaster or anything, and um, they can tell that you've been inside and tampered with things then uh, it's going to cause you problems. Ok that was pretty simple getting that through there. Ok Okay, that makes sense. A, a, a slight gap there for your wires to go through so don't worry about trapping the wires or anything you don't have to drill any holes for the wires okay that, obviously I need to attach that under there but that that's your, your amplifier that's your plug to there uh, that one goes to there and that, that that's it pretty much done obviously I need to, to attach that glue that down um, and then if I decide I don't like it if I decide I want to sell the pedals and I, I want to keep the load cell or what, whatever the scenario unplug that remove everything plug that back in and it's completely back to normal nothing's damaged simple Obviously the uh, plug and play kit where you don't have to do any of this is a much simpler option but if you're on a bit of a budget like me you've got to find other ways around things. And to be honest it's pretty satisfying um, doing things this way. I think having loads of money and just being able to plug some it in is probably satisfying as well but I haven't got loads of money so whatever base back on that will hold that in okay yeah, for now let's just tidy this lot up
Yes, just tidying this lot up now. Yeah, all I'm going to do is just dab of hot glue and leave that in there. Obviously, the wire's all tucked in nicely out of the way. And yeah, it's, it's that simple. I don't know how long this has taken, but not really that long, has it? And considering the whole thing cost me, um, I don't know, 22 quid, 25 quid with postage and stuff. Yeah, pretty pleased. Obviously, I don't know if it works yet. <laughs> if it doesn't, you won't even see this, so it doesn't matter. Are going to get trapped anywhere. Now, I, I am going to, before I plug anything in, I'm going to double check um, that I've got these wires the right way around because I've seen a couple of pictures and, and they've got them different ways around. But I'll double check. But as far as I know, the 5 volt goes to the right hand side, the signal goes to the center the ground goes to the left hand side. Uh, it seems to make sense with the other plugs that are in there. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll double check but as far as I know that's right. If not, I'll let you know. into the There we go, all back together. Now, 
for those that don't know that that bit of movement there nothing will register in game for that movement because that side of it has been disconnected and uh, it, it's that pressure there that will uh, register in the game once you go from there start pushing hard on there that's what will register just noticed uh, the way that's moving I'm gonna I'm going to use the top one, if I can get that out. And hopefully we'll get a bit of a straighter push on the rubber and it'll last a bit longer might have a bit more travel. Okay, that, that feels pretty good actually. We'll see how long it lasts though, because uh, it doesn't look very strong that rubber. I might have to figure something else out with that, but for now, that it's done. What I might do, get a spring that will go round that up to that and then you've got a little bit of pressure at the start as well hmm come back for more what I'm going to do a few jobs to do inside and then I'll get these set up and uh, fingers crossed it all works Thank you. 